Hello and welcome back to my channel. I never start my videos with hello, it's usually hi guys, but anyway, that just came out today. Welcome back. Today I'm going to give you an update on raising bilingual children. This is a topic that a lot of people are interested in on my channel. I've posted a couple of videos about our journey and you guys seem to love it. There's so many views in those videos and so many comments as well. Um, lots of them really supportive of our situation. So if you're new here, I recommend you watch these videos first. I'll leave them linked in the description box below. Today is going to be a brief update on how it's been. My eldest is five years old and my youngest is three years old. So a lot has changed since my last update and a lot has changed in the way I think about bilingualism. If you have any questions for me, please leave them on the comments below. I will try my best to answer all of them. If not, I'm always on Instagram, so you can send me a DM on there. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends if you think they might find it interesting too. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you get notified when there's a new video from me. Now let's get straight into the video. So just a brief summary of our situation. I am Brazilian and I speak Portuguese, which is my native language. My husband is Welsh and he speaks English and we live in Wales in the United Kingdom. So our primarily spoken language is English. My husband doesn't speak Portuguese, but he is finally learning, which is something that I'm gonna talk about a little bit later. So our situation has always been that I'm the only one who speaks the two languages and I have found it really hard to introduce a fully bilingual system in our house with the children. Um, so I think when we started this, I didn't quite know what to expect of the whole bilingual situation. I had no idea what to expect or what this would mean for us as a family. And I think it was just the logical thing to do because me being bilingual and having children, it was just that thing, well, I would just speak to them in both languages. And looking back, it was quite naive of me to think that it was just gonna be that straightforward and simple. And I know that for some people it is straightforward and you might have different circumstances to me or you might have the same circumstances and still find it easy. So the fact of the matter is for lots of reasons that I've mentioned in my previous video, I don't speak Portuguese to my children as frequently as I speak English. I mean, it's not even nearly as much as we speak English. It's very, very little in comparison. And I've spoken about our challenges as well with my husband not being bilingual and with me not having any relatives where I live who speak Portuguese. All my relatives around me are from my husband's side of the family, so they all speak English. All my friends around here are English speaking and my Brazilian friends live in London, where I first lived when I came to the UK. So living in Wales in a small village is the, the chances of hearing Portuguese and listening to it on a day to day basis are very, very slim. And I don't get that exposure to be able to click Portuguese into my brain. And although I'm really, really close to my family, when you live abroad, the relationship is slightly different. It's not the same as someone popping up for a cup of tea or going out shopping together and just having that close contact daily. Our contact is more of a, you know, we always catch up for hours, two, three hours on a phone call. And usually we do FaceTime, so you can't always do a FaceTime. And there's the time zone difference as well. Brazil is three to four hours behind the UK. So, and this is not me trying to make an excuse. I'm just pointing out the difficulties that we face on a day-to-day -day basis compared to maybe someone who has a mum or a sister or a brother or a friend nearby who speaks their native language to be able to kind of spark that language. I just don't get that Portuguese spark unless I'm on the phone to my mum or my sister or my brother and it is not the same. It's not the same as having that close contact with someone else. You know, maybe your partner speaks a little bit or understands it. So these have been the main challenges for me. Just being able to switch from English to Portuguese out of nowhere at the drop of a hat. Whether I like it or not, I need to speak English. I can't just speak Portuguese at home with the children. I need English to communicate with my husband and with everything that happens around our house, to answer phone calls, to answer the door, to talk to neighbors and friends on school run. Everyone speaks English and I need to use the English language. So it is not feasible for me to say one parent, one language. 
mum only speaks Portuguese, dad only speaks English because that just hasn't quite worked for me. I haven't found that easy to be able to switch like from English to Portuguese. And I've lived with this guilt and this disappointment over my children not being fully bilingual for far too long. And now I think I just wanna try a different approach. I wanna raise my children with exposure to bilingualism. I want them to have knowledge of their heritage and familiarity with the Portuguese language and knowing what it sounds like. At this moment in time, that's what sounds doable and reasonable for our family. And to you, this might be the bare minimum. It might not even be close to enough. But if I keep trying to make something work for my family that doesn't work, if I keep trying to please other people and make other people happy and in the process make myself anxious and not happy with the way things are going, then what is the point of that? You know, it's me and my husband and my children, it's us. We are living this life and we need to do something that works for us, not for other people, not to make other people happy and please them. And I don't want this video to discourage you from maybe thinking that you can't raise bilingual children because you've got the same situation as, as me. This is just my reality. And if you have a different opinion on how I should have done things, I completely respect your opinion. And I will never deny my children the option of learning Portuguese and in fact my son has shown such a big interest in learning Portuguese recently and I have been doing so much more Portuguese with him than I ever did in the last four years simply because he's interested, he's engaged, I don't have to force it but I won't be putting such a big responsibility and weight on my shoulders and I will not carry around what is perceived to be a failure in raising bilingual children anymore. I've felt like a failure in that aspect for so long and I kind of, I'm used to taking people's comments about how my children are not bilingual with a pinch of salt and just not letting it affect me too much but deep down it does because it was something that I thought was going to be you know easy and you know sorted by now I thought they'd be speaking both English and Portuguese but it just hasn't worked out like that and yeah just hasn't been as straightforward I know I keep saying that because I know family and friends are probably more disappointed than me my mum for example my mum speaks English but her English is a lot more basic than her Portuguese and I think she would have loved to have her grandchildren be able to speak fluent Portuguese with her and that's one of the things that hurt me the most is knowing that my children are not at that stage where they can speak fluent Portuguese with my family in Brazil and building that relationship but it hasn't stopped them from building a lovely and beautiful relationship with my mum and my brother and sister and my uncles and aunties. That hasn't stopped them at all. My mum loves the children, they love her and, and they communicate in their own language. And as I said, this is just our reality right now and things can change as they are changing already with my, my son. And my husband is learning Portuguese. He's actually taking it seriously now. He's using Duolingo, the app to learn and he's doing really well with it. So I think that all of these little pieces of the puzzle help um, the language become more prominent in my house. But without these pieces of the puzzle, it just felt a bit disjointed for me. In a way, I've always felt more comfortable introducing songs in Portuguese to my children than actual speech and conversation. I just always feel like I, I get all tensed up when someone says, say something in Portuguese, or when I have to think about saying something in Portuguese in an environment where there is no Portuguese, Portuguese around me. It kind of feels like I've, I have to perform. And one thing I know for sure is that I know I'm succeeding in raising happy, healthy children. And bilingualism is like any other parenting choice, like co-sleeping or not co-sleeping, breastfeeding or bottle feeding. And it's just one of those things that sometimes it turns out how you thought it would, other times it doesn't. And you just, you can't blame yourself for the rest of your life for how things turned out if they not, they're not how you thought they would be in the first place. And yes, it would have been lovely if my children were able to speak both languages fluently from birth, but I need to be okay with whatever way our lives take shape and 
yeah, just, just let that sit with me and just move on and be okay with that. So yeah, maybe this is not the update that you were expecting, but this is where we are with raising bilingual children. If you're going through a similar situation or if you can relate to anything I said, please leave a comment below. And also if you've had a completely different experience and you've managed to raise your children bilingual from birth or you found it easier than you thought, then also comment below. I love hearing different opinions and sometimes these different opinions, they spark something in me and they give me an idea of how I could change things or maybe improve the way I'm doing things. So it's not just about having one type of opinion in the comments below. I love having different opinions, obviously always respectful and understanding that people have different circumstances. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to get notified when there's a new video from me and I will see you in my next video. Bye!